Today, we're figuring out if you can edit a high quality YouTube short using a free software like CapCut. So I've been using Premiere Pro and After Effects for the past eight years now. You could kind of say it's my comfort zone, but in my most recent video to blow up, which is being awesome, I can't believe how crazy that video has gone. A lot of you guys were asking me how to edit YouTube shorts like Ali Abdal using a free software like CapCut. Honestly, I don't know and I have my doubts as to how effective a free software could be in creating shorts of this high quality. But I really wanna figure out for you guys if you can actually create shorts using this free software because I know money is tight lately and I'm really curious to see how this works. But there's something I need to do first. Time to learn a new editing software. Fun. So first things first, I need to download CapCut both on my tablet and on my PC. And what? 500 plus a million downloads? I've been sleeping on this. Anyway, the download was going well, and then I opened the app and it dawned on me. I have no idea where to start with this. Let's watch some tutorials. So I spent the next 30 minutes watching some introductory tutorials to get the hang of the basics, splitting footage, adding overlays, text, and sound design. And at the end of this brief period, I felt much more confident and ready to start editing. Thank you, Primal Video. But in order to really put this software to the test, I need something to edit. So today I'm gonna to be creating a YouTube short based on the Pareto principle, or the 80-20 effect, which is the principle of the four hour work week. And I'll be doing it in Ali Abdal style once again, because that's what a lot of you guys wanted to see. Now I just recorded around a three to four minute take of me reading out my script to create this short. Now I just need to get my footage on my tablet, which if you're wondering is a Samsung S9 Plus. And to do this, I just used Google Drive. I started up a new project, and then just simply selected the clip from my device. And honestly, it was great to see that I could get my 4K footage from my Panasonic GH5 onto my tablet and then edit on there. That's pretty cool. Next up, I changed the ratio to be nine by 16. So we have that nice vertical format for a YouTube short, but that also meant I had to adjust the rotation and scale of the clip. Now, when I first opened the app, I did this by pinching with two fingers and rotating, which wasn't very precise. And I actually found the better way to do this is to go into the basic properties of the clip where you can then adjust the rotation by just dragging dragging along this slider to be 90 degrees exactly. And actually you can do this quicker by using the edit tool. Now this is where I encountered my first problem with CapCut. You see, when I would normally edit down clips in Premiere Pro, I pretty much only use the waveform to determine where to make those cuts. So I can see where my speaking starts and where it ends. On CapCut, especially on the mobile device, you can't see that waveform automatically, which makes cutting very painful. But I did find a solution to this. So in the main timeline, go to audio, then select extracted. Select the main clip that you previously imported into the project, and then just let CapCut do its thing processing the audio from there. Once it's done, line up that track with your footage track so it's all playing in time. And then because it's gonna make it a little bit loud and potentially echo, turn the volume down on this extracted clip. Now we can use the waveform from this extracted clip to make our cuts on the original footage. So you just select the footage clip, use the split tool and go through and make cuts through your footage. Just importantly, don't delete anything at this time because then it will mess up the timing of both of those clips. So go through and make all the cuts you need. Then once that's done, you can delete the extracted audio clip and go through and delete all the bad takes and bits of silence. Also, it's not a big deal, but CapCut tries to sneak in their logo at the end of your video. So just make sure you go in there, select that clip and delete it. Look, honestly, that wasn't too bad. It was pretty good interface. I didn't mind the cutting functionality. Having to add that waveform on top of the normal footage was a little bit annoying, but I'm pretty happy with the software so far. Now though, we're gonna try and add some of those effects. And I wanna see how many from my wish list I can actually get in to this video. So speaking of a wish list, there's a few effects that I really wanted to try with this video. Now with all my edits, I always go through my footage or my script and plan out the visual aids that I wanna use to communicate what I'm saying better. It's kind of like a rough plan where I sketch out, you know, this could be a cool idea to communicate this point that I'm saying. And often what I end up doing in the video does change because either I can't achieve that effect or I come up with a better idea as I'm going along. But I always start with this plan. Now for this particular video editing in CapCut, I really wanted to see if I could recreate this intro from Ali Abdal's shorts 
which I did in my other video. So rotoscoping myself out, having a mask come down so the background reveals. Speaking of backgrounds, I wanna try and see if I can recreate a looping, moving, stop motion paper background with that texture overlay that I used in my previous video. Now for the rest of the video, it's just simply graphics coming in, seeing if I can do subtitles in the same style, how sound design works in this app, and also adding in some smooth transitions. And I have heard whispers that the captioning feature within CapCut is actually really good. So I'm really keen to try that out. But let's start with that intro and what I ended up achieving through the mobile version of CapCut definitely looked good. It's not 100% like Ali's, but considering this is a free mobile program, this is a really cool effect. But there was a problem. So the tricky thing with working within CapCut is the layers, especially on the mobile device. You have your main footage track and then you have a bunch of overlays. Then you also have dedicated layers for text and stickers. But the tricky thing about achieving this effect is I need to have a background behind my main footage and have my main footage be cut out, which I couldn't see an easy way of doing this within CapCut. But I did some thinking and did actually find a way to achieve this same effect. But first, before I show you how to do that, we need to create that looping texture background to put behind our footage. Now again, this wasn't as easy to do as it was in After Effects. But if you do wanna have this same stop motion style background in your videos, which really helps bring them to life, we need to create a new project. Make sure the ratio is nine by 16, so it will work within our videos. And then go find yourself some paper textures. I again will be using resources from Texture Labs, which is a great free site. So I got this black paper, and then this sort of parchment looking type of paper. And then to match Ali's style again, I'm gonna use the same halftone texture loop that I got from Envato Elements that I used in my previous video. So in this new project, I'm gonna import just one of those paper layers and then that halftone texture. I'm gonna turn that texture texture footage into an overlay layer and then move it to the side because we're gonna play around with that a little bit later. Now, with our paper texture, go to the beginning, scale it up so it fills up the entire frame and some. So I can move it around, rotate it, and you're not gonna see any blank parts of the frame. I'm gonna set a starting position, move it around to somewhere where it looks kind of cool, move forward a couple of frames and use the split tool. I'm then going to adjust the position and rotation of this new clip to be a little bit kind of opposite of what I had in the first one. Again, go forward a couple more frames, add another split, and move around the paper. Now I did this four to five times and once that's done, do a last split and delete the rest of the footage. So you should have five individual clips which are gonna jump around. Now to adjust the timing, I stretched out each of these clips so they're all 0.7 seconds long. But now this only lasts for a couple of seconds and I want this to go for at least 20 seconds. Now I couldn't figure out an easy way to copy all of these clips and paste them in sequence again and again within the mobile version of CapCut. So I had to individually go in and copy each clip move it to the end, copy the next one, move it to the end, and do that over and over again until I filled up that 20 seconds. If you're gonna do that, a useful tip that I figured out on the second time I did this is to place a marker in the middle of the first clip. So you can do this by just clicking on that clip and clicking the keyframe button. That means as you scrub through your footage, you're gonna see which is the first clip within that sequence. And when you copy something like 20 times, you're gonna see, all right, this is clip one. After that's clip two, three, and four. So when we have our 20 seconds filled up, go to the overlay layer and drag that on top of our footage. Scale it up so it covers the entire frame. And then to help it look more like a stop motion effect, because right now it's playing through really fast, click on style and then select auto velocity. Once that's finished processing, click on adjust and bring the time between two down to zero. And as we play this back, it's gonna help create a sort of stop motion style, but it's still going a little bit too fast. So we can also click on this clip and go to speed and adjust the speed down to either 0.3 or 0.4. And to make it blend in with our paper background, we can use the blend modes and set it to either lighten or soft and just drag down that opacity slider until it's a subtle effect. Now with the parchment style paper where it's sort of a lighter background, I wanted to use the same texture, but I didn't want white dots, I wanted black dots. So I just applied the negative filter to that footage to make the black into white and the white into black and use the darken blend mode instead. Now making sure that this is a 4K resolution file, export it. And now we can bring it into our previous project and we have a looping paper texture background. But now we go back to the rotoscoping effect. So the problem still stands that I can't put this paper looping background behind my main footage. So what do we do? So the solution is to go in and copy the first clip of your main footage. This will create a duplicate right next to it. Click on that and select overlay, which will put that into an overlay layer. Drag it so it lines up with that original main footage and also make sure you turn down the volume, otherwise it's gonna get very echoey and very loud. Now, because I wanna have a mask come down and I also wanna have myself rotate out so my head is still visible, 
I'm gonna need two layers here. So copy that once more and actually leave that one to the side and we'll bring it in a little bit later. So the first effect, we're gonna have it so the background slides down and reveals that looping paper texture. And to do this is actually really easy. I'm simply gonna use the mask feature and specifically the split function. Also turn down the opacity on the original footage layer. So I create a keyframe at the beginning, making sure that the slider for that mask is right at the top of the screen so everything is visible. And then move forward a few frames bring that slider down and angle it slightly. Then click on the first keyframe and select this graph icon where you can adjust the easing in of that movement. So that's part one done. Now get that other clip and drag it on top of the footage again, making sure everything lines up. Click on that clip and select cut out. Now you could use just a background remover effect or you can also use the customized background removal. This time I used the custom one and I simply just painted out over myself and it did a pretty good job at cutting out the background. The only caveat is it turned my footage sideways once more. So again, I had to go into the basic properties and make sure that I rotated it so it matched the orientation and scaled up and adjusted the position so it perfectly matched the previous layer. Now this is important, it has to line up with that previous layer, otherwise this effect won't look good. So you can actually go to the previous layer and look at the scale, rotation and position of that layer to make sure that the new one lines up within those basic properties. Now at this point, you may also have an issue with the ordering of the layers and potentially that paper background might actually be on top of it. So if you're not seeing any of this, just go onto the layers button within any of those clips and make sure the order is correct. So you wanna have that paper background right at number one and then the other ones at two and three. But now I want a bit more room for my text and my graphics to appear on the screen, just like Ali does. So I wanna move the two cutout pieces of footage of me down. So in order to do this, you just go to the start where you want this movement to begin, add a keyframe on one of those layers, select the other at the same point, add another keyframe, move forward to where you want the movement to end. And then on the first layer, use the basic properties to adjust the position down, go to the second layer and copy that exact same position movement. So making sure those values are the exact same. Then to make this smoother, go to the first keyframe on one of the layers, select any graph you want. But if you do that, make sure you go to the other layer and select the exact same graph. So the movement completely matches. And then we'll have both of these layers move down and reveal more space for us to work with. That was pretty cool, but now let's add some text. So adding text is actually pretty straightforward in CapCut. They give you dedicated layers for text and graphics, particularly stickers. And all you need to do is just select add text, type what you want, select the font you want, and they give you a pretty healthy selection here. You can then add in animations for both in and out. I particularly like the typewriter effects, especially when paired with a typewriter sound effect. And you can even apply a kind of turbulent displace type effect like Ali does by just using the wiggle effect in the loop tab in that animation window. However, I went through my editing process, put in all the graphics, did the animation, things like that, added all the text I needed. And then I made one simple edit and all of my text vanished. I couldn't see it at all. And I tried everything. I researched, I cleared my cache, I tried reapplying the text and nothing worked but I did need text to bring this short to life. And so the solution that I found was to just go through this first edit, add in pictures, add in graphics, make my footage cut properly, and then export that at the highest res that I could, import that export into a new project, and then add my text on top of this. In other words, it was a pain in the neck. But quickly, let's touch on the stickers because there's a lot of options here and honestly, they were pretty cool. I used this like one, this subscribe one. This little circle highlight was really useful for pointing out a specific focus of one of my graphics. And then also to match Ali's style, I used a lot of the tape stickers. And then to have them slide onto the screen, I used the simple slide right animate in feature. And then just put text on top of that animating in as that tape slides in. Now, as for graphics, it was actually really straightforward to add them in. You just drag them in, adjust the scale and position. And for most of them, I just used a simple slide in or a zoom in transition to give a little bit of flair as they came in. The one exception is this little fancy combo effect that I use for this treasure chest, which looks pretty cool. And also the Apple logo. Now, there may also be a few of you who will ask how I did this falling money effect like this. And simply, I just found a green screen clip off YouTube, brought it into my project, used the cutout effect and just select chroma key, selecting that green color and boom, just like that. I have cutout money falling onto my screen. Really easy and honestly, 
pretty decent. And speaking of easy, let's talk about the transitions because honestly, it was super easy to add transitions between clips. I found all I needed to do was just zoom in and click on these little buttons in between clips, which opened up my transition options. The main ones I liked were zoom ins and zoom outs. And then also to make the video flow a little bit better, I went into my main footage and on a few of the clips, I just zoomed it in a little bit, making sure my eye line was the same between each of those clips. And all of these transitions paired with some sound effects really helped bring the video to life. Speaking of which, that's what we're doing next. So adding sound and music was actually really easy. You get your own dedicated sound layers and you access them by clicking this sound button and you can bring in any music or sound effects you want from your device or you can use some from CapCut. Now, personally, I wanted to use my resources that I got from Artlist. So I got this really cool song that was pretty epic, pretty sort of motivational. And then also these sound effects, which I used in my previous Ali Abdal shorts recreation video. I could bring them all in and line them up with my transitions, with my graphics, and it just made the video feel a little bit more lively. So the final step is to add captions to the video and the beautiful thing about CapCut is I can do it outside. Now this step was actually pretty easy to do and just as easy to do as in Premiere Pro. If not easier, you just go to text and select auto captions from video and then start. And CapCut quickly auto transcribed my entire video. Now it did get a few things wrong, like calling Vilfredo Alfredo, but it was really easy to change using the batch edit tool. And also in here, if a caption's too long, you can just place your marker and press enter, and it will separate the two captions into two separate clips and adjust the time to be almost correct. Now to adjust the font, just select one of the caption clips, select style, and select the font you want. For this one to match Ali style, I'm gonna go with Monsterat, change the color to black. And then to add this white border, I'm just gonna select this little icon on the style panel. And then to adjust the settings, go to canvas, play around with the roundness, the padding, until we get a style that matches Ali's. Also make sure the setting apply to captions is ticked. This means it will apply to all the captions we have in this video. And we can also move around the position to make sure that it doesn't overlap any of our graphics or our footage. Now the timing will will be off on a lot of these captions. So the easiest way to adjust this is to just go in and drag the end and starting points of each of these clips so it lines up. You best go through all of these captions to make sure that it actually flows nicely. Because if it doesn't, it's a little bit jarring. So we did all of that in the mobile version, but let's now talk about the desktop version. Now, pretty much everything was the exact same process. Some of the buttons were in a different place, but overall, I was really impressed with how this PC slash desktop version performed, especially considering it's free. But the one thing that took me a little bit longer to figure out was how to smooth out the animation between keyframes. So having something like this go a little bit smoother. Now, as you saw in the mobile version, we could just click this little graph icon and select any of these smooth movement graphs to achieve that smooth movement. On the PC, there's no such button, but we can still do it. You just have to right click the clip you're working on and select show keyframe animation. Then it will show you all the things that you have keyframes for. So for this layer, I have mask keyframes and I have position keyframes. Now to smooth the movement on any of these, you just need to select one of these attributes. So I'm gonna select the mask effect and then go right to the end of the clip where you'll see this little drop down menu. Click on that and now all of a sudden you'll have the graph of that keyframe animation. And you'll also have three little buttons that appear in the middle of the clip. Now to make it smoother, just select the middle one and boom, like that, we have a smooth animation. And now guys, we're done. This is the Pareto effect how to get more done in less time. It was discovered in the early 19th century by the Italian economist Vilfredo Pareto, who discovered that 80% of effects came from just 20% of causes. For example, 80% of a company's profits come from just 20% of their customers, their regulars, or that most people wear 20% of their wardrobe 80% of the time. And it relates to us creators too, with often 80% of the results coming from just 20% of the content that we produce, whether that be income, views, or subscribers. So how can we then take that Pareto principle and apply it to our lives and save time and get the same, if not better results? Or simply just identify the 20% of activities that you do that produce 80% of the results you want. And then all the rest either reduce, eliminate, or outsource. The trick is finding what that 20% is. Have fun. Wow. Now I'm not saying wow because of my video, it's irrelevant. What I'm saying wow is, is the fact that I made that with a mobile application, which has literally blown my mind because, and it's made me realize that there are so many more opportunities and possibilities with editing software out there. And I've just been stuck in my little shell with Premiere Pro and After Effects. And I realize now, 
I need to try some more editing software. So this is gonna be fun. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope you learned a lot, and remember, you're only one video away. Thanks for watching.